In this video, what I plan to do is give you a very basic insight into the way curvature filtering can interact with bump effect in Bryce. Now, I say basic because you have to consider is that it's possible for the curvature filter to also affect the bump channel and this would create a sort of a feedback issue if there wasn't some kind of order of process and I've not determined what that order is or tested it enough so we're just starting with a very simple setup and I encourage you if this kind of thing is of interest to you to experiment yourself you might discover something new right okay so let's get on with this I'm going to use the infinite plane go into the materials and put a blob in bump because we're going to need some kind of bump output I'm going to hold the shift key down click on the name go to basic select basic sign check out of there and here we have our bump effect and I'll use actual selection so you can see it on the infinite plane and the scale of this effect can be tuned through the transformation tools here with this scaling factor there so as it approaches 0% the the effect becomes a lot bigger it's in world space mapped and you can also affect the scale here but you can't see what the numerics are but it's just a handy quick way of doing it the other thing we're going to need is a curvature filter now I considered putting it in this here we could also you know have have a color component output and a bump component but I thought that was risky and could cause confusion at this early stage so what we'll do is we'll use the B channel put a blob in there hold the shift key down click on the name select check blue check out of there go into the texture source editor and for this we're just going to use alpha output and I'll just click here so we can get access to these controls go into noise have no noise use the curvature filter here in the filter channel and I'm going to increase this first value a to create a narrow transition zone and position this more or less in the middle because we're going to use the option where we can detect the difference between concave and convex we'll have a color output processed in the final combination using linear interpol 3 and then it will take it from these colors by processing the alpha and if I hold the alt key down I'll just get rid of the red output for this middle channel so we've got a green output so that's consistent with the other videos I've made regarding curvature so the aim is to try and line this transitional area right in the middle that gives us a sensitivity between these two options which is um, concave or convex or convex or concave I cannot remember and so I'm not going to try just one or the other so I'm going to check out of here and then we'll look at our material options calculate curvature and linear scaling have been automatically checked by putting a curvature filter in one of the texture channels so I'm going to switch on find concave you can see that's changed the output and we know we must have got the green area about right because it's turned green we'll have hard edges that's not changed anything because we still haven't detected any curvature the curvature we're going to detect is the curvature not of the geometry but of the bump and so it's going to take this height map which is processed into a uh, bump effect here that we can see and for that we need to curvature to account for bump so if we engage that now we can't really see but there is a bit of effect occurring in there and we've got a bit too much red which suggests to me that I need to shift this blue area a little bit over to the right which means increasing the value in this B value in the filter so I'll check out of here and we can see that little transitional area has grown slightly so we'll just keep sliding that over to the right until we get some blue showing in so we want blue and red coexisting and then we can start adjusting other things and see how that effect uh, is modified by the adjustments we make so here we go right so I'll check out of here now and give you a render of what it looks like in our main view I'll lift the camera up point it slightly down at the ground and render so uh, I will draw your attention to things things that are significant because this curvature filtering is not using the geometry of the infinite plane well it is actually a bit but we'll come to that later not in the way you might think it's not faceted in the way it is when you've got a mesh object and bear in mind the infinite plane is probably made up of very few facets of mesh geometry it's using the procedurally generated bump map which means well that the transitions are quite smooth which would be great if it could do this on a mesh object but obviously it's not got that level of smoothing 
and I've not tested this with a bump map that's a material either which would be another interesting thing to try out now I've just thought of that so I'm going to do that while we're here so I'll save my basic sim sign here in the specular halo switch the bump to here use a picture go into here and we'll navigate Let's see if we've got something in one of these that we can use for a bump hide I might have saved some materials in here yeah let's use this so this is just an image and I'll copy and paste that into the alpha output because that's what's interpreted as bump and what we've got here we can do uh, picked interpolation should provide some smoothing on this effect I'll see if it does so here we are Ooh, that's looking really grainy isn't it and very high resolution so let's see we're parametric let's try world space let's change things a bit ah right okay okay we'll try parametric but we'll do some some scaling down or up it's not looking very promising I have to admit maybe I'll have to zoom in very close to the surface to see what the effect is but that's okay we can just lower our camera down get close and look at it Ooh, there's a lot going on there uh, it is sort of the, the pattern is sort of visible. I can get a bit closer in before sticking the camera right through the surface. Well, there are things happening there. I think the bump might be a bit high. Maybe if we lower this effect, there we go. That's that should clarify things for us. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. That looks like a moray pattern to me, which might mean that this isn't working hmm interesting eh so I don't know whether that works or not let's try taking picked interpolation off and see if that modifies it in, in any way no it's looking more or less the same either badly broken or I don't yet understand how the effect works let's get really close I'm just using the nano preview now to get to the point where the camera is nearly touching this surface and we should we should be down to pixel information here okay so that's not the result I expected and I can see some bump information here and it doesn't appear to be affecting the curvature as things stand but we'll pump the bump back up and we'll see if it changes the pattern on the surface no it's just changing the bump effect there so maybe it doesn't work with images but I'll reserve judgment on that I quite like that effect actually <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I'm gonna save that it's a weird effect um, save as just save this save as strange effect I always store these things and uh, we can always come back to it later so anyway that was a little bit of abortive uh, search there but I hope you don't mind if we do this now right let's go back to where we were so we'll just abandon that for now uh, leave that there we don't need that in specular and back to contemplating what effects this has here so what uh, what is evident is if we reduce the bump level it's essentially flattening the surface out and as a result when it reaches zero there is no curvature so the stronger the bump the more curved the surface is so the, the narrower the transition zones will be so that's fair enough there oh, don't want displacement the other thing is that if we scale the surface up in the other direction this is also affecting whether or not it thinks it's bumpy so if you scale it up a lot then you have to increase the bump height to get back to a similar state now if you think about this is the example I give is if you were stood on top of a hill and were to look down at your feet the ground might seem quite flat but if you were to look a little bit further away you see the ground sloping away from you so it would look a bit curved and then if you looked into a neighboring valley then you might conclude that in actual fact the place you were on was very curved so this is the effect of scaling so by scaling it we're, we're effectively looking either further away or closer to determine how curved an area is uh, the the bump height is more an effect of, of scaling vertically so obviously the higher the bump the you know the pointier the mountain top becomes if, if this like is considered a mountain top now something else we can consider here if you cast your mind back to the other curvature video I did recently then you have a terrain and you can set it so that 
you've got world space curvature. And what this does is it takes account of the vertical scaling of the mesh object, in that case, to which we had applied the uh, curvature filtering. So if you had a mountain and it was a train and you squashed it so it was just flat, it then interpreted the curvature on the basis of its flatness, whereas before it was only looking at it as, as its base geometry. So you could flatten it out, but the curvature effect would still remain the same. And you could stretch it and the curvature would remain the same until you applied world space accounting for curvature, in which case when you stretch the mountain to be very tall, it considered it very curvy, and when you flattened it. So that's a bit like having op the option to increase and decrease the bump. The thing is, though, the thing about the infinite plane, the thing you'll notice about it is that it has no y value. So it makes sense that if you attempt to scale the plane vertically, because its y value is zero, multiply zero by any number and you still have zero. So I tried this anyway, because you would, wouldn't you? And I discovered, hold the alt key down and scale vertically and Strangely enough, it does seem to think it has a Y value and it responds as if you'd scaled it, even though when you check the attributes, it's still zero. Now, the thing about this is, is it only goes so far and then something changes. And that was how, if you regard the last video I recorded, a very brief one about changing the way that the infinite plane behaves, I discovered this effect. So if you scale this up still further, and this is having the effect of changing its response. It seems to hit a point where suddenly the uh, the horizon between the horizon and so far from the camera becomes invisible. Now I did ask in that video, I asked myself whether or not light rays could pass through that and then it occurred to me I could just easily test that. So while we're here, and I've just scaled it up still further so you can see that's brought it in even further, while we're here what I'm going to do is stick something there. See if we can scale it up even further. I think we might have reached the limit. That might be as big as it's going to be and as high as it's going to be in Bryce. So that's pretty big, even though in the attributes, you see that's its maximum size. We can't go bigger than that. I'm still saying y equals zero. If I check out of here, as Horro pointed out, that will reset things. But if I just use the cross, we'll stay where we are. I'm going to put a cylinder sticking through this area and uh, we'll see where the light manages to cast on its lower or it's cut off by the invisible infinite plane that still exists. So here's my cylinder. I'm going to call that my test cylinder here. It should have come in in default grey. So there it is there. And what we're going to do is move it back now until it crosses that transitional area. I know this hasn't got anything to do with curvature now. It's, I'm just curious, that's all. So we'll see where we are with that. Oh yes, it's there. So we're going to make it bigger so we can see what we're doing. Make it bigger still. Right, let's have a look. Can we see? Oh yes, right, and that's fairly clear. I'll just move it in towards the edge now, because the edge is not as uh, far out as I thought it was. You can see there the shadow being cast by the infinite plane. Here. So, even though we can see through it, the shadow is cast. So, I suppose the next uh, question to ask is, we'll just turn the sky off, atmosphere off, set it to fully white, switch to render options, uh, premium effects, I'll lower the rays, use true ambience, uh, scatter correction, boost light, drop the ray depth to four, get rid of our direct light, so we're just using the, the, the white sky, and you can see that we don't have a shadow. Now, the reason for that is, it's because we're dealing with two different render engines here, and when you have the uh, true ambience, uh, what happens is you have a situation where the ray comes from the camera, meets the surface, responds to the geometry, then goes off and looks in the environment for light sources. If it reaches a light source like this white area, it goes back to the surface and adjusts its properties according to the surface properties and eventually finds its way back to the camera along its original path. So it's just doing a bit of a calculation there to see whether it's going to be tinted by the environment. And that's one approach to the way that things are rendered. If we go to the regular rendering option, which is render options regular, we're using a direct lighting method 
which is um, need to turn that sun back on. Here we go. Calculating things in different ways. It's uh, it's taking the, the the light source as as literally its source of direct lighting and passing it to the geometry surface and then processing the angle on that surface to determine how light that would be if the camera's looking at it and then it works to the back to the camera so it's it's just two different processes and as a result it's calculated the shadow region because it's reached the invisible surface here whereas the trambians because we can we can see through the surface the trambians can see through the surface so it doesn't get that shadow casting so there you go that's um a little bit off topic there. I'll have to include that in the title and warn you that it's just going to be an experimental thing. So let's get back onto our curvature. So we discovered now that with world space curvature engaged, we can then scale the surface. Now, this may have an impact on how it's going to uh, respond to our bump height because we've kind of moved it to some kind of uh, limit in the way it works. So we're still getting some difference from the bump height there, but that difference might be modified if we reset the infinite plane now. We'll just hold uh, Control and Alt, click on one of these control points, you see one. That'll restore it to its default state. And then we can consider that uh, the bump height is still affecting our, uh, our effect. Affecting our effect, yes. But does the scaling? Yes, the scaling does as well. So there's a, with the addition addition let's go to the right one of world space curvature we have yet another way of modifying the effect here by changing the y value on the infinite plane and that changes the effect and at some point it also changes the behavior of the infinite plane and that uh, if we scale it right up we can we can change its effect as well so those are some things to consider with the bump as as it affects the curvature filter and some other things besides so well there was a bit of an experimentation i hope you found that interesting and this will encourage you to experiment with this effect in bryce and maybe discover something new for yourself cheers now